Well, what's going on guys? So in my past four years, I've created a lot of different systems for generating game objects. Originally I made a terrain generator which randomly instantiated and placed objects such as rocks, trees, mushrooms, uh, for forest type biomes. Shortly after I used the same type of system for generating uh, different cave levels with rocks, mushrooms, ore veins, also NPCs like enemies, but uh, this is just about specific uh, objects. Uh, later on, after working on my fishing and swimming system, I expanded this even further to include underwater objects such as seaweed and coral. Also included fish, but again, that's more like an NPC type generator. Now, a lot of these objects would be either like destructible or some indestructible. And aside from these terrain type objects, I also made a loot generator to create random items and then instantiate item pickup objects that the player could pick up. This included simple loot table items such as consumables with preset stats, but also more complex items such as generated equipment with random affixes based on the item level. So in addition to this, most items, with the exception of armor that the player picks up, will be able to be equipped in the action slot. Some examples include melee weapons, which will uh, swing the weapon upon use after it's equipped. Range weapons will shoot a projectile. Tools will require more unique things, such as like a hoe will be only for tilling soil, and it only could interact with the soil, while uh, shears could be used for collecting wool from sheep. And then you have consumables, which I mentioned earlier. You could use on yourself or feed to an animal or give um, to human NPCs as a gift. Now everything I've done till this point has worked reasonably well, but the issue is that each object has its own separate prefab with its own unique script. Which means I had to manually set each scriptable object item with a specific prefab to instantiate with specific scripts for each for each. So uh, this could be get, getting pretty manual. Uh, so a perfect example is something I've been working on most recently uh, is tree chopping, but a perfect example is the copper axe and instantiating that object. So I have a loot generator to generate an item pickup for the copper axe. If it's dropped from, uh, let's say, the player inventory or dropped as loot from chest or enemy, the player should be able to pick it up. And this has an item pickup script attached to it for that purpose which interacts with the player interaction script, which is another script to have. I also have a generator that instantiates a copper axe prefab in the player's hand if it's equipped. This includes a weapon collision script rather than an item pickup script. So, you know, the player can't pick it up when it's in its hand, but if it collides with an enemy, it should do damage, while an item pickup axe shouldn't do damage. The problem is I have multiple scripts for generating different, different objects, and depending on the type, even if they're all copper axe, in reality, most objects share similar variables, so in my opinion, they should all be generated from one object generator, especially for like simplicity of code, for bug fixing and stuff later on. The code structure should instantiate the object first with shared input variables, such as mesh, material, and color. Some items might have multiple materials and multiple colors, such as like the handle for an axe should be wood, and the beige color versus, um, you know, the blade, which depending on the material, it could be silver, bronze, uh, copper, uh, gold, and apply a collider if needed. Then determine which scripts need to be added if the copper axe should be equipped by a player NPC or just an item pickup or maybe an indestructible object that can't be interacted with. Uh, for example, like no collider or scripts needed. And maybe it's just like a, an axe on a, a wood block in the world, like as an environment. Uh, design kind of thing that you can't interact with. But all of which will generate this copper axe, all different functionality for this axe. In addition, all objects should have a parent and specific spawn position. So I think one of the best things about taking this new simplified top-down approach is I can create quick, unique items quickly. If I wanted to equip a gold axe instead of a copper one, I can input a gold color and increase the base damage rather than create a whole new separate item and prefab for a gold axe. So then I'll have, you know, 10 different prefabs for different axes when they all share pretty much the same functionality, except a couple of variables. Now this will work well not only for player upgraded gear, but also for tougher enemies with similar skill sets and equipment types. So let's say you get further down, you get like more of like the uh, experienced, I don't know, uh, 
troll bandit kind of thing and maybe you'll have a stronger axe. So rather than create a whole new prefab for that in addition to the player, I could just change a couple of variables and there's no need to instantiate and destroy, you know, different variables. I mean, different prefabs every time rather than just change a couple of things such as like maybe mesh or color or material. So my solution to this, as I use the player input system, I decided to make this workflow to determine how to spawn every object in the game even if they may be so different, whether it be a copper axe that the player is equipping or, you know, some seaweed on the ocean floor that maybe can get chopped by a sword or a, a sickle or something and maybe something comes out of it. Uh, so this is how I broke out my object generator. So I came to the solution right now and maybe this could be changed going forward, but I think it's a really good start. Um, on the top here, you see a legend, which colors, all these things. So if it's blue, it means it's a script. If it's yellow, it means it used a player interaction, which is like a set trigger that I use on the player that he can interact with, he or she. Um, and then green is that it needs a collider. What I talked about before is all, most of these things, whether it be like a uh, an item pickup or just like a destructible container or barrel, all of these things are still gonna have a mesh material and material color. So no matter what type of object it is, it's always going to have some combination of different mesh materials and colors, material colors. So it's really a, a good way and it kind of clears my head to look at it in this type of way. And from the iPodic generator, it's going to determine if it's a certain item or is it just like uh, an indestructible or destructible object. Now these indestructible or destructible, they can't be picked up but they can be either interacted with or destroyed in the world. So for example, uh, indestructible, not interactable might be terrain grass that you could just like run through and you're really not interactable, but it it's good. It's like, looks good in the environment. An in interactable one might be an indestructible one, maybe like a bed, like to sleep in, a chest to open for loot, but you can't destroy it. Um, a door, I have it as oh, like you could open and close it, but it actually might be destructible. So that's like another thing I have to think about too, because if I want the player like in Fable, you could destroy the door. Um, maybe I want that in the game. So I have to be able to make this a, like a adaptable system where I could change it quickly without, without having to, you know, revamp every prefab or every script that I've written. So this is another reason I'm doing this. Um, and every interactable have an interactable script. So, you know, a bed you could sleep in, a chest you could open, a door you could open. A hole is something that you can go down and descend into like, you know, le greater levels or harder levels of caves. Mailbox, check your mail and sign, you know, de de determines, um, it'll come up on like the uh, dialog box window of, you know, which direction a certain town or city or forest or whatever location, whatever the sign is saying, you know, open for business, up in the shop, different things like that, that I could use that functionality for. Uh, destructible, I categorized it into every destructible one will have a, an object stat and probably interactables as well will have object stats. So I'll put that there eventually. Um, so it will be a plant, let's say they're all destructible. So like if it's a bush, a crop, well, it's like a vegetable or fruit plant, uh, grass, tree, these all could be, now over here, terrain grass might be different than grass. I haven't determined that yet, but at least I could change it quickly. Like weeds could be chopped and then that soil tile will be usable and you could chop down a tree, which will be destructible. Containers such as a box or barrel could be destroyed for, you know, loot inside. And then rocks and ore veins will have the same kind of concept, which will drop stone and other types of gems, as well as ore if it's an ore vein. And they'll all flow through this destructible, which will be generated through the object generator. And then uh, the object stats will determine things like, uh, will, will hold variables such like life, uh, type. So if it's like a rock, it's gonna be, able, it's gonna get double damage if you're using a pickaxe. Uh, if it's a plant, and if it's a tree, it's gonna get, take double damage to axes. So another reason why I wanted to do it in this way, so I could more determine what type of uh, object it is. So when it comes to things like, you know, specific damage types and interactions like that with weapons, it'll process the right type of damage. 
As I mentioned before, item, it could be either an item pickup, so it might be a consumable equipment, skill tome, trade good, and uh, these will all have a mesh material and material color, and they'll have an item pickup script. So this will interact with uh, the player interaction. So the player could pick up whatever type of item is dropped as an item pickup, and it will show as that particular item. So whether it's, um, I don't know, armor or consumable, uh, skill tome, which you put in your inventory and then uh, learn a new skill. And then a trade good would be like uh, any kind of resource, stone, gems. And those would all be on the ground that can be picked up. And then finally over here, another part of the item would be an equipped item. So it'll generate something in the player's hand, depending on what it is. Maybe it's like an apple that should generate in the player's hand. And then determine... with the player uh, interaction, like for example, like a seed pouch. This is gonna be different depending on what, what happens, but if this is gonna be, if the players hold, player interaction collides with a, uh, like a soil tile, and he's holding a seed pouch, then it's gonna trigger, you know, plant, and then you'll be able to plant in that. Otherwise, there will be no interaction shown up if the player has that equipped, but at least I could generate it in the player's hand and not need a script to attach to the seed pouch. Um, next would be tools. Now this is where it gets a little bit more tricky, which is where I was kind of confused why I wanted to do this. Where like a fishing rod would have a fishing and water checker on it. So the player knows, you know, you only could cast in water and then it'll trigger the fishing script or the fishing mode and things like that once the uh, the fish is on the line. So all that needs to be on there, but it shouldn't happen if if it's not actually equipped. And again, this, this saved me from, if there's an upgraded fishing rod, it should all have the same type of thing, fishing and water checker without needing to create a thousand different prefabs for, you know, golden fishing rod or, you know, different upgraded type fishing rods. They all should follow the same logic. Same thing with these tools, and these will all come with the player action interaction. If the player interaction um, triggers with a soil tile and the player has a hoe, it'll show like till. If the player um, is holding a net and it, a bug comes by, it's going to show as capture, and the player could quickly just interact and then capture it. Shears with wool. And I could do this to all type of animals too, like if I'm milking a cow or like anything I'm not thinking of, I could still add to this pretty easily without revamping the whole system. And then watering can, same thing. If it goes near a soil tile, it's going to water it and it's going to show water. So all these have shared functionalities and that weapons won't really need the player interaction. So that's why it's not in this yellow color. But, it, but all melee weapons will have a weapon collision, which is which is important. But none of these will need a weapon collision because they're not weapons. So if it triggers and it hits an enemy, um, at least it'll have a weapon collision and a collider to do that. Now these don't need a collider because they're going to be triggered with the interaction. So just explaining this, it's clear in my head. I mean, this is a lot, I know, for anyone new that's just starting to watch this channel or even this video. Um, but I'm going to end it here. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, got some insight as to why I'm doing this uh, object generator type script. And, uh, you know, feel free to comment below if any questions or comments. And uh, thank you for watching.